वेलकम टू द ऑनलाइन प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ यू पी आर टी ओ यू प्रयागराज टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू लुक इन टू वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज रिसर्च प्रॉब्लम दिस इज बिंग टेकन केयर इन एम कॉम वन जीरो टू एंड एम बी ए टू पॉइंट सिक्स फॉर ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स हु आर स्टडिंग द मास्टर्स डिग्री इन कॉमर्स एंड मास्टर्स डिग्री इन मैनेजमेंट आर बेनिफिटेड बाई दिस लेक्चर नाउ मीनिंग ऑफ रिसर्च प्रॉब्लम वॉट इज रिसर्च प्रॉब्लम एज इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई हैव टोल्ड यू दैट रिसर्च इज ऑल अबाउट सर्चिंग अ थिंग विच इज ऑलवेज बींग देयर सो रिसर्च यू आर सर्चिंग द सेम थिंग बाय डिफरेंट परसेप्शन वॉट आर द प्रॉब्लम्स विच यू हैव फेस्ड वाइल कंडक्टिंग योर रिसर्च वर्क now for a researcher when he starts his research work the big question arises is that what is the research problem on which he is going to conduct his research for this research problem is being given the term problem means a question or issue to be examined means a issue that is to be examined by a researcher that this is the phrase on which our research work is going to be concluded the term problem originates from the greek word problem meaning anything that thrown forward a question proposed for a solution a matter stated for examination means whatever problem which is going to be thrown to a person here a researcher used to study a lot of literature before starting his research work this review of literature is very important for conducting a proper research after having a review of literature a researcher can say that this is the past study which is being conducted in this topic and this is the gap which he has find means these research are been confined to these objectives but how my research is different from those research work is going to be stated in the research problem now points to be considered on research problem what are the points which a researcher has to conduct has to consider while conducting a good research the first point is the right question must be addressed if research is to aid decision maker right question the question which is going to be framed should be properly constructed okay so the question has a relevancy if you are doing an analytical study the research problem should be like that that you are going to analyze a thing it should not be that you are going to explore a thing and you are going to study a analytical study never setting on a particular approach as a researcher if you have a pre concept that i am going to have a explorative study but the review literature says that in this study you have to be some descriptive methods which you have to follow or you have to apply scientific study or you have to apply some explorative work so a researcher should never set a particular approach he should be open he should not be confined to certain parameters he should be open and explore all the dimensions for a good research work third point what decisions do you face if you do not have decisions to make there is no research problem as a student of management and commerce every research and development activity is confined to certain decision making process so for a good decision maker you have to have the proper alternatives and selecting the best alternative is what your research work is so here for a good decision you require certain parameters on which the research is going to confine and the best outcome proves to be a best study what are your alternatives here one has to see that for a decision making i have told you that you must have a proper alternatives if you have got the same alternatives which a past study has then your research work is not going to have a different dimension the result will automatically the same as of the past study so here the alternatives which are going to be there must also be considered if there are no alternatives to a choose 
again there is no research problem if a researcher hasn't have any alternatives automatically he is not going to have any research work because he is being consigned confined to certain parameters now what are the criteria for choosing the best alternatives here one should address that what are the alternatives which he has got if you do not have criteria for evaluation again there is no research problem means if you don't have any parameters while conducting a research you have framed a topic and you have conducted a review of literature and on the basis of review of literature you have framed certain problems but as in the previous slide i have told you that you have to make a proper decisions if you don't have a parameters different parameters you don't have any research problem if you don't have got any alternatives you don't have got research problem means you have to see the things you are researching the things but with a different dimension but by a different approach the researcher must avoid the acceptance of the superficial and the obvious means here whatever you are going to write whatever conclusion you are going to make whatever suggestions suggestions you are going to make must have a precise base it should be based on a certain fundamentals on a certain theories on a certain assumptions and that too is being tested by different statistical tools now the research process so here we have seen that what is research then we have seen that how you are going to frame research problem on the basis of review of literature now it's a process that how you are going to conduct your research work the first one is formulation of the research problem as soon as you get the topic or for making a good topic first of all you have to go through different literatures that are available in the different journals libraries and e media according to that you will find you are being attracted towards a specific topic you take that topic and start confine your study towards that topic after confining that study you will know that this is the problem which is still existing in that area so that problem you are going to take and frame your objectives and on the basis of that objectives you are going to frame your hypothesis so first point is formulation of the research problem on the basis of review of literature you will find a gap and that gap is known as your research problem then extensive literature review extensive literature review now you are confined to that only topic in the first case you are confined to all the areas which are there if you are going to conduct a study on human resource management you are reading all the books of human resource management you are taking different parameters training and development performance appraisal financial man management marketing everything you are taking over there but if you are confined to only human resource management then you have to go with recruitment process training and development performance appraisal compensation management on this basis you are going to confine your study and if you have confined that on the human resource management you are going to work on attrition rate then here there is an extensive level literature required for attrition manpower planning then the third one developing the hypothesis developing an hypothesis means hypothesis is a one line statement which is saying that this is the problem which you are going to test and according to your analysis you test your hypothesis preparing the research design research design is the backbone or you can say the nucleus of all the research research design says that what are your sample sizes from where you are going to collect the sample which is the method you are going to apply for collecting them sample whether it is a questionnaire whether it is schedule whether it is interview all should be properly elaborated in research design what are the sample size how you are going to collect those sample what is your area of the study what is the state or what is the territory which you are covering in your study everything should be mentioned in research design 
determining the sample design. Now, you have designed that this is the area, this is the territory which, on which we are going to conduct a, a study. And on that basis, you are going to design your sample. That how you are, which type of sample you are going to take. Stratified sample, cluster sampling, whatever, random sampling, whatever you want, you can take over here. Then after deciding the sample designing, you are going to go with collection of data. How you are going to collect the data? Whether you are going with questionnaire, whether you are going for schedule, whether you are going for interview. These are the methods of primary study, primary data collection. Now if your study is based on the secondary data, automatically you are going to take the data from the published sources. Then execution of the project. After all these things, you are going to say that this is the framework on which my project or my report is going to be. So on these things, you are going to frame your project. And after projecting, framing your project, you are going to do the analysis of data. Analysis of data is very important because here you have to apply different statistical tools for your remark, for your analysis portion. How you are going to conclude. So analysis is very important. And on the basis of analysis, on the basis of your data, you are going to test your hypothesis. You are going to have the true hypothesis, null hypothesis, and alternative hypothesis. If your analysis says that your null hypothesis is being accepted, automatically your alternative hypothesis is being rejected. Now, what is the difference between null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis? A brief I want to give over here is this, that whenever you frame your hypothesis, you must consider that for framing a null hypothesis, there must be no difference between your universe and your sample. Means whatever you are going to frame, you see that there is no difference between the universe and a sample. Why? For an alternative hypothesis, we always have to consider that there is a difference between the universe and the sample. Moving to the next point, generalization and interpretation. After analysis, you have tested your hypothesis, whether your hypothesis is being accepted or rejected. And on the basis of that, you are going to generalize the things and interpret it that this is the findings which I have got in my study. On the basis of findings, you are going to conclude. And on the basis of conclusion, you are going to suggest it for the future, who, future readers who are going to be directly or indirectly affected by that research work. Then the last one is preparation of the report. There is a set format on which you have to present your research report. And after doing all these activities, your research work will be okay. Now this is the flowchart by which you can see that how you are going to start your research work and how you are going to conclude. First one is the selection and formulation of a problem. Again, I am saying that you have to see that where your research work, what are the target areas on which your research is confined to. This is the research problem. On the basis of that, you are formulated a hypothesis. On the basis of objectives, certain hypothesis you have framed and this hypothesis formulation is assessed by the research design. If this is a hypothesis and for testing of this hypothesis, I am going to apply this research design. And after your dis research design is properly made, you are going to collect your data. And collection of data is being properly checked by the generalization activity. Generalization and then analysis and interpretation of data is also being done by the help of this. So these activities are very important. This is a flow chart. You must understand that after the analysis and interpretation of data, there is nothing. You have to conclude here. So your research work starts with the formulation of problem and ends with the interpretation of data. Now, for analysis portion, there are different scales which is being given, different levels of measure measurement which is being given in the books. There are four levels of measurements which is being considered in research methodology. In the first level of measure measurement is nominal measurement. 
This level of measurement consists in assigning numerals or symbols to different categories of a variable. In the nominal scale, what we used to do is see that whenever a questioner is in frame and you are applying a nominal scale, that is male or female, boys or girls, right? So there you are going to name, you are tag a certain name that how many male respondents are there, you are going to write M. If you, are, you, if you are going to have a female, you are going to write female. For male, you are going to write M. For female, you are going to write F. This is nominal scale. You are tagging the things. Clear? So, here everything should be properly tagged. Cardinal measurement. In this level of measurement, persons or objects are assigned numerals which indicates rank with respect to one or more properties either in ascending or descending order. In nominal scale, I have told you that whether it is male, female, boy, girl, whatever you are going to assign. In ordinal scale, what you are going to do is we are going to scale the things on ascending order or descending order. Here we used to say that in how many types a things are going to occur. So for this, we are going to apply the ordinal scale. Now, interval measurement. This level of measurement is more powerful than the nominal and the unknown levels. Why? Because here the data is being interval classified into different forms. Right? Then, since it has one additional characteristic which is equality of distance, however, it does not have any origin or the true zero. This implies that it is not possible to multiply or divide the numbers on an interval scale. Here we used to see that, we have seen the example of nickel scale. Nickel scale is an example of this. Here we used to say that this is the gap, 5 to 10, then all the things. According to that, we say that this is the interval on which our data is going to be. But here it is very difficult that we are not able to find our the origin from where the scale is starting, we don't find the origin. Or true zero, we don't know that where is the value of true zero. So this is the drawback of this scale. And the last one is ratio measurement. This is very important. Ratio is known, this is the highest level of measure, measurement and is appropriate when measuring characteristics which have an absolute zero point. This level of measurement has all the three characteristics order distance and origin means here whatever scale which we are going to take has got order has got distance and it has got the origin also right for example if we are saying that our scale starts from 0 to 5 6 to 10 11 to 15 16 to 20 means there is specific ratio of 5 5 5 5 here there is an origin that is 0. This is the value of 0. And here it is also a distance that we are going towards a positive scale. So all three things are being considered in a ratio measurement. Therefore, it is being considered best for any research. Now you see the different level of measurement and their characteristics may be summarized up. So in nominal scale, you have got no order, distance or origin. Here you are going to just write male or female, boy or girl, yes or no. So everything you are going to write, there is no order, there is no distance, there is no origin. We cannot say that this is positive, this is negative. When we have got ordinal scale, it has got the order, but no distance or origin. Means we can say very often, often, never. So these are the calculation, it has got the order. Very often means most of the times. Often means sometimes. Never means it hasn't had a card. So it has got order, but it hasn't have got distance or direction. We don't know it is positive or negative. When we take interval, it has got both order and distance, but no origin. Interval, I have said that if we say Likert scale, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, if we rank certain things, 10, 20, 50, if we say first, second, third, fourth rank, so there is an order. But we cannot say that whether it is a positive or negative. We don't say that what is the origin. 
what where is the original zero lies in interval scale we know that is a positive or negative but we don't know that where the origin lies and in the ratio scale it has got all the three properties order distance and origin means it has got the thing that is whether it is male female apart from that whether it is positively going or not positively going or whether it has got the order that is the thing which is been originated now the characteristics of a good measurement what are the characteristics which one should require for a good research work measurement the one is a unidimensional it must have got a uniformity it must have got a dimension single dimension for a good measurement scale you must have a proper dimension likert scale is one of the best measurement scale because you know that on these parameters you are going to frame your research then linearity it must be in a single straight line your all the measurement it should not be haphazard so the more linear your data is the best outcome it has got validity whatever data you are going to collect you must validate that data by applying a proper statistical tool reliability whatever statistical tools you are applying is meant for that specific study if you are correlating the things you are going to apply correlation if you are going to measure the goodness of fit you are going to apply the chi square test accuracy and precision how precise your study is what are the data what are the sample you have collected from where you have collected the sample all should be properly framed and the more precise your data the more precise your outcome is simplicity you don't have to go with the rocket science you have to make your research very simple if you are doing a comparative study it is better to apply any statistical tool which has got comparison for example you can go with correlation if you have got a single linear test you can go with regression then practicality practicality means you have to see that whatever you are going to do has got the acceptability to the society as a whole right so these things are very important for any research problem and its finding here one should must consider all the things which is being vital for any research problem so here we have seen that how you are going to frame a research problem and what are the measurement scale on which a research uh, research problem can be assessed and the third point is that what are the criteria of the measurement and the last one is that what are the criteria of a good measurement scale so this makes a good research work i hope you have understood that topic which i have taken thank you